Hey, gang. Uh, Mark Perpetua here from Reptile Encounters. I know I made a post a long time ago about a change in some of the laws, which is affecting uh, what reptiles I'm going to be allowed to continue working with in the future. Uh, we have dangerous animal laws, and I think movies or, or TV series like Tiger King brought to light how easy it is to get exotic animals, especially people that don't have the proper training. So as more and more people get a hold of these things without proper training, uh, states are going to create laws making it harder for people who do work with them in a professional way. Uh, it's going to be harder for them to have. The biggest change right now in New York State is the caging requirements, and it's really hard to meet that in your average house. So without building a new facility and outbuilding to house their reptiles specifically by themselves, it's gonna be really hard for me to meet the new requirements. So I unfortunately had to make the tough decision of um, getting prepared to find new homes for many of my regulated species. And I've been lucky over the 30 plus years of working with reptiles, I've been lucky to work with some amazing animals, including venomous snakes. So I thought as a little send off to some of the changes, I'd show you some of the venomous snakes I've been lucky enough to work with. Uh, this right here is a Northern Copperhead. And one of the things about Copperheads is they're found locally where I'm from. I'm from the Hudson Valley, Sorgates, New York. And uh, this is an animal with a really infamous reputation. Unfortunately, often many other snakes are mistaken for copperheads because people just don't know how to ID them. Uh, but as their name says, they got a bright coppery head. The other thing to look for are these hourglass shaped bands that they have. And um, it's really pretty easy if you know the, the details to look for what type of snake is a copperhead compared to the others. However, uh, they, they got a bad reputation. I've never really found a nasty rattles, um, copperhead. I've seen defensive copperheads, but I mean, check this guy out. Being treated re res with respect, he knows that I'm not a threat right now, and he is very relaxed showing that even though a snake might be venomous, they're not nasty by nature. And it's one of the things I always tried to get across to my audiences. Not that you should go around poking venomous snakes with a stick in the wild. They're scared. They're defensive. You look like a big predator. But they're not going to come out of their way to attack you when you're not looking. The other venomous snake that we have in our area that I was lucky to work with for many, many years is the timber rattlesnake. And the timber rattlesnake I'm going to show you today He's still learning to trust people, and you could probably hear that rattle already. The timber rattlesnake is a snake that I guess is a little more easy to identify as long as you hear that sound. Yeah, the rattlesnake has the modified scales at the back end, enabling it to make that noise as a way of letting you know where it is. It's telling you it doesn't want to be disturbed. It's telling you to please back off. And even though the snake is uncomfortable and rattling, you notice he's not going out of his way to get at me. He wants to keep his distance. If you're hiking in an area where rattlesnakes might live, here in our region of uh, the Hudson Valley, anywhere from Bear Mountain in the south to Overlook and Mohonk, Schwangunk areas here in the Mid-Hudson Valley, even as far north in the Adirondacks as Lake George, hikers will encounter timber rattlesnakes. But if you give them four, five, six feet of room and pass by, you'll notice how shy they actually can be. They're not a big threat. We've survived thousands of years in our environment alongside rattlesnakes, and it's nothing new. They're, they're not an animal that presents a threat to you unless you go out of the way and present a threat to them. When I have a rattlesnake that's not used to being handled, something new to captivity or new to a collection, you just have to give them lots of respect and treat them with slow, cautious movements. And eventually they'll learn to calm down. In fact, this snake is learning already how to let me handle him to support his weight. It's called tailing. We keep the front end where the business end is. That's where the fangs and the venom comes from. We're gonna let that sit on the hook 
And instead of grabbing his tail, if I hold his head high enough, he doesn't see me, I'll let him think he's crawling on my hand and gently scoop him from underneath. And then I got a hold of him for support on the hook. So he'll eventually calm down. He would be a great individual moving forward if I didn't have to rehome him to a zoo in the near future. But I got one more rattlesnake I want to show you. I've been lucky enough to work with snakes that aren't always close to home. And this snake here is a much larger individual to show you today. Who's had enough today, I guess, of being in that box, so it's rattling. There we go. This is a Southern Pacific rattlesnake, and he's a good-sized individual, and this is, this is really how big they get, maybe up to about four feet. While there are larger rattlers, one of the things the Southern Pacific rattlesnake has going for it is an interesting cocktail of venom. Most rattlesnakes and pit vipers in general, like the copperhead and the timber rattler, have hemotoxic venom, which attacks the bloodstream, causing hemorrhaging, breakdown of blood cells, a lot of swelling, and a lot of pain. But the Southern Pacific rattlesnake here has, with the hemotoxin, some neurotoxic venom, which is normally something you would think of seeing in the cobra family. Neurotoxin attacks the nervous system, calling, causing paralysis. It can stop your heart from beating. It could stop your breathing muscles from working, leading to suffocation, all because of the way the neurotoxin affects the paralysis of those nerves. So this is actually one of the more dangerous species of rattlesnake, and its bite normally requires much more anti-venom in order to make sure a patient doesn't die. This isn't a snake native to our area, however, as the name implies, Southern Pacific. He's from the Pacific Coast. The snake is found in Southern California, south of LA through San Diego County and into the northern parts of Mexico into Baja, California, which is actually, although it's California, part of Northern Mexico. So these are animals that I unfortunately am gonna have to quit working with, at least with the time I have left here in New York. Maybe someday in the future, I'll move south and try to get a job with a zoo. But this is my send off in order to show you one last time the incredible snakes that rattlesnakes are. So thank you once again. Reptile Encounter still doing shows. I just unfortunately will not be able to share rattlesnakes with you any longer. Thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to sharing more reptiles with you guys as we continue in the future.